Long before the heart of Africa was ever mapped, explorers were irresistibly drawn to this secret world. greatest secret of all for thousands of years was the source of the world's longest river the Nile the Nile is unique among the world's rivers some call it the most important river on earth because it gave life to the first great civilization to a geologist like me this desert is a rich and productive environment. Yet just a mile from the river, I don't find a single living plant. As long as 8,000 years ago, farmers diverted water from the Nile to irrigate their crops and made the desert bloom. Without the Nile, there would have been no great pyramids no advanced civilization with all its innovations in language, art, and astronomy. Each summer, the water level of the Nile rose several feet without a single drop of rain falling in Egypt. The early Egyptians built structures to measure the rise of the river precisely. But a few times in history, the river mysteriously failed to rise for several summers in a row, causing famine throughout Egypt. Every year, the farmers watched the river and wondered, where does all this water come from? This was the Nile's first great mystery. In 1858, a British explorer set out to solve the mystery of the Nile. He proclaimed Lake Victoria the one true source. There was one minor problem, though. He was wrong. Lake Victoria contributes only a fraction of the Nile's waters. <laughs> the main source of the Nile is in the rugged highlands of Ethiopia. The riches of Egypt are a gift from Lake Tana. Over 80% of the Nile's water comes from Ethiopia's Blue Nile and its tributaries. My goal is to lead the first team down the entire length of the Blue Nile, from here in Ethiopia all the way to the Mediterranean. 3,000 miles. I've brought my team to Lake Tana for the expedition of a lifetime. We reached the Ethiopian highlands just in time to witness a Christian procession. I went for the first time to Ethiopia, and um, I trust Pasquale as our leader. 
Abuna Zerabruk. Yeah, he's one of the nine senses who came from Syria. Piccolo Abai. Piccolo Abai. Or Gilgit Abai. What is Abai? Pasquale has led expeditions to Mount Everest and run many of the world's most violent rivers. He knows very well what he's doing. We're here to attempt the first descent of Africa's mightiest river, the Blue Nile. Our pirates meet the opium boatmen to be our cooks, our helpers, and bodyguards. We'll be heading into territory few outsiders have ever seen. The upper part of the Blue Nile was first run and mapped in 1968, when a British Army expedition explored just this section. They had many serious injuries. One man died. They found that the Blue Nile was crawling with huge swarms of crocodiles. They had 70 experts. My team is mostly novices. All right, you're in the water again. Okay, again, in the boat. I'll really have to keep an eye on our Egyptian scientist, Dr. Mohammed Magahed. Mohammed, where's Mohammed? As a hydrologist, I spend my time indoors in the laboratory. Pasquale is worried about me, and so am I. Gordon Brown, our safety kayaker, is the only one who'll be with me for the entire four-month expedition. I'll come by. You grab these loops right back here, uh -huh. and pull yourself up on the boat. I'll take you back to the raft or take you to the shore. Right. Either way. You Five years ago, Gordon was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He would have killed most of us. But he fought it off with a year of radiation and chemotherapy. He's really a survivor. Saskia Lange is a journalist from Spain. She's writing an article about religion along the river. The river travels through areas with no roads, so I'll be able to study indigenous people. People I could never meet any other way. Thank you very much. Miriam Seco is our team's archaeologist. Here in the holy city of Lalabella, the Ethiopians dug down 40 feet into bedrock. His church was chiseled out of one giant block of stone. It's one of 11 carved churches linked by tunnels. For 16 centuries, the Christians here remained very closely allied to the church in Egypt, 3,000 miles away. I wonder how the Nile kept that connection alive. Some people say that hidden in these stone churches is the Ark of the Covenant, the box that Indiana Jones was after. The Ark contains the tablet engraved with the Ten Commandments, the actual tablet given to Moses. Is it really here? Bella is the eighth wonder of the world, or if it's not, it should be. Just as the Christians in Lalibela carved magnificent churches out of solid rock, the Blue Nile River has been carving this huge canyon through the highlands of Ethiopia, which the British named the Grand Canyon of Africa. The scout helps, but it's deceptive. From the air, it's really easy to forget that it's the most dangerous river in Africa.
The aerial scout confirmed that the high water had finally peaked. It was time to start the expedition. Gordon and I plan on being on the river for probably more than four months. This is Bahandar, and again, this is Lake Tana. This is where we will be putting in. Here I was, leading the greenest bunch of river rookies that ever climbed into a raft. Keeping everyone on this expedition alive is my greatest responsibility. And then finding Sissy Sot Falls. We will then go through this canyon, which has a lot of class five or six white water. Before we departed, Muhammad had a promise to keep. My grandfather is a farmer in Egypt. He gets 100% of his water from the Nile. I promised him when I go to the river source, I would bring him a vial of holy water. The Ethiopians treasure the Nile, just as we do in Egypt. As we head down the river, the whole team is pumped. Most of the wild rivers on every continent have already been run, but not the Blue Nile. This is one of the last great river expeditions left in the world. No one has ever succeeded in running this entire river from source to sea. All those who tried it have either died or given up. As a geologist, these lava flows have a certain fascination for me. Lava flows like this one pinch the river together, forcing all the water through a narrow channel, creating huge rapids. But the volcanic rocks are as sharp as knives, and our rafts are made of fabric. This was Muhammad's very first swim in the Nile. I kept a close eye on him. There's a fine line between an exciting rapid and a deadly one. The rafts are really heavy, so when the river gets too deadly to run, we send one raft through empty, and then we portage the rest of the gear. One sure way to get a laugh in Ethiopia is to carry a rubber raft on your head. <laughs> the Ethiopian highlands were once carpeted in thick forest. But just in the past 30 years, the Amhara tribe have cut down 90% of the trees to make charcoal for cooking fuel. This has changed the entire watershed. The Blue Nile carries lots of volcanic minerals that used to nourish my grandfather's fields in Egypt. I test for the salinity because the rising salt content of the Nile is destroying our farmland. The river is accelerating, but the team won't really grasp the magnitude of this river's power until they set their eyes on one of the most magnificent sites in all of Africa, Tissisat Falls.
Gorton's a bit of a cowboy. He's got his own style of doing things. I told Pasquale I was going to run every inch of this river. Now he knows I'm serious. Now it's time to see how Mohammed holds up under pressure. He's never been on a rope before. Don't worry, okay? Good. Good. You're doing really well, Mohammed. Keep moving. I need to push Mohammed to get it over with fast. The less time he has to think about this, the better. A little further. A little further. A little further, Mohammed. A little further, come on. A little further. Okay, move it further. Saskia got tired of waiting for Muhammad to inch his way down, so I let her go ahead. This isn't really fair. When I signed up for this trip, Pasquale asked me if I could swim. He never asked me if I could fly. Muhammad didn't score a lot of style points, but he showed me some courage. I think our city boys start to toughen up. I didn't come all this way just to collect water samples. I'm mainly here to experience the river, to gain some insights about it. But I'm also here to learn about myself. And I'm so surprised at what I can do. These people, the Amhara, hike a long way down to the river to tend their crops. But otherwise, they shun the river as a dangerous place. They're kept away by bandits and malaria. The most gung-ho team member is Michel Lulier from Chile. He's the team photographer. I love Ethiopia. I admire the gentle dignity of the people. They enjoy what they have. I just hope my photos can capture their spirit. Christianity survived here. The mountains kept invaders out. This is not exactly a gentle land. I admire fish and predators, except when they're contemplating having me for lunch. The most dangerous croc in the world is the Nile crocodile. They swim 12 miles an hour and eat more people in Africa than all other animals combined. So we were floating down the river, and up on the beach was this huge crocodile, maybe 14 feet, and he slid off the beach and was really aggressive and made a beeline straight for Gordon. He started to arch out of the water, and uh, he just kept coming at me. So I raised my paddle, and I smacked him on the head. He dove under my boat. He hit my boat as he went down. For a second, I thought it was going to tip over. And as a crocodile opened that big mouth, I just was afraid that the crocodile was going to grab hold of his arm and take Gordon and twist him under. If that would have happened to Gordon, he'd have been dead. And there was no way Gordon was going to go ahead and right himself again before the other crocodiles got to him. At night, when we camp by the river, we keep an eye on the crocodiles before we go to sleep. I never had to do this in Cairo. Hey, cold the water, you can hold. Those aren't rocks, Sophia, those are hippos. Take all the answers that you think you understand and let it go. Just let it go. 
Pasquale warned us that one rogue hippo can easily capsize a raft. But that didn't keep us from getting a closer look. That was the most beautiful thing to see for the first time, hippos. <laughs> there were eight around the boat <laughs> with their ears like that. Don't ever worry. 